Lead yourself first. Before we can influence, before we can ever persuade or change anything externally, we have to first lead ourselves. And that means delivering on the promises we make to ourselves. It means showing up when we tell ourselves we're going to show up. It means putting ourselves in an environment conducive to growth. There's an old metaphor from Wayne Dyer about an orange, where he essentially says that it doesn't matter what you do to an orange. It doesn't matter how hard you squeeze it, or how many you have, or how you manipulate it. Grapefruit juice will never come out of an orange. Right? Only orange juice can be emitted, and similarly, we can never give or contribute what we do not have inside ourselves. We can't expect our lives to look like anything other than a culmination of the tiny actions, steps, and decisions we make on a daily basis. The external world is a product of the internal world. And the internal world is not realized until we learn to rule over ourselves and our lives with conviction. We can break this down in many different ways. Jocko Willink says discipline equals freedom. John Maxwell talks about a leadership lid where success levels can never exceed leadership capability. And sure, it applies to teams, but it also applies to self-leadership. Are you searching for and committing to the little hinges in your life that, as W. Clement Stone says, swing big doors that make the difference? Are you taking responsibility for your shortcomings like leaders do? Are you learning to trust yourself? Are you seeing past the trap of perfection and committing to progress? Are you taking the little things seriously? Because at the end of the day, all things are comprised of little things and only little things. The bottom line is that we master nothing until we master ourselves. Trust ourselves. The bottom line is that we win when we lead ourselves hold ourselves accountable for the little things that matter even when it hurts or we're tired even though no one's going to come up and reprimand us for falling short right? there are often no visible consequences when we let ourselves down so let's manufacture that urgency if you promised yourself you'd get up when that alarm clock goes off it becomes no longer optional if you promised yourself you'd go down the road that scares you, it becomes no longer one road of many, it is now the only road. Even though it may be scary or intimidating, it's the darkness that must be confronted. You are more powerful than you know, you are more capable than you understand, but you must lead yourself to your potential. Those little things matter. And so while the temptation is to brush them off as insignificant, while the rest of the world ebbs and flows through life like jellyfish with the tide, your superpower will be to see, harness, and multiply those little decisions like they are gold. Your strength is that when it's easier to run, You'll be the one that instead stands up and leads yourself to greatness. The road to this moment wasn't an easy one. There were times where you thought you knew, but simply didn't. There were plans made, 
that drastically differed from the ones fate had prepared. There were days that made you question yourself, your beliefs, that made you ask, what is my purpose? Look, to live is to have felt these things, asked these questions, to have seen firsthand the discrepancy between what we draw up and how life unfolds. And I think about this discrepancy often. The swings and misses, they hurt. You know, that quick shiver you feel down your spine when thinking about the wrong turns made. The tugging at your heartstrings when reflecting back on things said, or perhaps worse, left unsaid. It's easy to get lost in that feedback loop, letting the past dictate the present, letting yesterday define today. But here's what I've come to see as the truth. To experience the things that make life beautiful, we have to be vulnerable in a way we otherwise wouldn't. Open ourselves up to an unknown that, you know, we could have skipped altogether if we really wanted to. All that pain, all that hurt the past provided could very easily be the reason you shut down, the reason you play small. That hell you walk through could be your justification for never stepping out into the chaos of life again. That would, at first glance, appear to make sense. Seem ideal, even. But that pain could also be the reason you look around you and say, after all that, after experiencing everything life threw at me, I'm still here. And as I stand here now, I'm looking out at an array of possibility that is infinite. I'm equipped with an understanding and a worldview that was once foreign to me. I'm armed with a perspective that has changed my life for the better. By stepping out into the often dangerous, brutal, unforgiving world, I have elevated myself. And that has made all the difference. And while it may feel intuitive to run from a reiteration of yesterday's pain, it's wisdom that urges us to instead use that pain as a multiplier. The key to something more, something miraculous. Not to cower because we once endured it, but to stand tall because we overcame it. And that's what we often miss. We can think back to the adversity, sure but we're often unable to see how that adversity shaped us. Our own strength, it's never gonna scream out at us. It's never gonna let us know it's there. We have to take the time to acknowledge its presence. We have to peer over our shoulders to see how far we've traveled. We'll always have obstacles before us but if we don't stop and assess, we won't see that the obstacles have gotten bigger. Not because life's gotten harder, but because our own evolution has permitted us to step into bigger arenas. It has equipped us to take on larger adversaries. A simple willingness to be vulnerable has become the flame that lit up your soul. So the question is, will you step out? 
Well, you see that vulnerability not as a crack in the foundation or a chink in the armor, but as strength. To love, it requires accepting a susceptibility to being hurt. To play the game requires an acceptance that you just might come up short. To bet on yourself means understanding that you might fall right on your face. To want more than you have now means acknowledging that you might be humbled along the way. This is what it means to live. Giving a piece of yourself in order to acquire that which means the most. The torturous, often counterintuitive willingness to step out into the darkness of night when your heart races and your mind moves a million miles a minute. That's vulnerable. That is power. And it's an investment in a tomorrow that otherwise would not have been available to you. You are not your past. You are the wisdom derived from its lessons. The courage removed from its trials. And the hurt, that hurt that was perhaps at one point the only thing you felt. It's not your reason to shrink into yourself. It's your reason to step back out to say to the universe, I have the strength to again dance with the unknown, to risk the short-term discomforts that life often hands out like candy in exchange for the chance years from now to look at your reflection and say, I got back up. I did the hard thing. I followed my heart. I wandered into that darkness to obtain the wondrous reality that is, for a time concealed, I did that. So love again. Grow again. Try again. Build again. Believe again. See again. Feel again, step out into the world again. This is who you are. Underneath the fear and insecurity, underneath all those reasons to not go, there lives the beginning of the miracle that is life. And it won't be easy. The timing will never feel perfect, but the question will always exist. It will always exist within an arm's reach of where you stand. Can you be that vulnerable? Can you be that courageous? And not just when things are going well, but amidst the turmoil, the chaos, the self-doubt, when your memory only wants to play highlight reels of where things went wrong, where you swung and missed, will you choose to see those moments not as the chains that confine you, but as the strength that elevates you? Will you be vulnerable enough to give away some of you in order to expand and transform all of you? Failure, by definition, a lack of success. The definition of success, the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. According to these very guidelines, failing is to be marching toward an end point and for one reason or another, not getting there. 
Is failure a possibility? Of course it is. There are no definites in life. But failure is also self-induced. It is not an outside occurrence. It's not a coin flip or an event that we helplessly watch unfold before us. It's not up to chance. Failure is a decision. The decision to end that same march that you once started. Just like putting on your shoes is a decision. Just like traveling or running or eating, these are decisions that we make. And when the word is all too frequently brought up in everyday conversation, what's evident is that there is a fundamental misunderstanding of what it means to quote unquote, fail. It's spoken about as though it's something that's projected onto us, as though failure is an illness or catastrophic event, something that emerges and subdues its victims. And speaking of it in such a way misdiagnoses the problem. It's easy to say so-and-so started a business and it failed. So-and-so didn't make the team, so they failed. But there's more here. One does not fail until they take a step back, look at the situation and say that it's no longer worth it anymore. You don't fail until the moment you raise the white flag and say, I cannot do this. Because if you're out there, if you're changing, adapting, stretching yourself and your abilities, if you're seeking help, mentors, learning, growing, embracing the struggle, being relentless in your effort, no one can bring that word into the conversation. It cannot exist. If you are moving forward, you are not failing. You cannot be working towards something and failing at the same time. It is impossible. You can have your ups and downs. No one will refute that. You can get knocked on your ass, have moments of fear and doubt, but that is growth, not failure. Growth is taking the uncomfortable and adapting to it overcoming the obstacles that inevitably get in your way. Failure, on the other hand, is deciding that growth is no longer worth the sweat. Because I'll tell you what, there's always a way to win, and I truly believe that. Sometimes the cost is extreme, sometimes the price is more than everyone around you is willing to pay, but that's a conversation that you need to have with yourself. Just know that if you want it, somewhere there exists a solution. And knowing that is the beginning of greatness. It is the start of success. And as for that question, what if I fail? Here's some insight. That thought is wasted time and it is wasted energy because as far as your goals go, you pull the strings. You are the writer, you are the director, and you are the actor. Failure only occurs when you write it into your script, when you choose it for an ending. And it is one ending, one of many. It is one approach of many. Once you've started that march towards what's important to you, do not let failure be the choice that you make. Choose growth. Choose the adventure, choose the long way home. Victory over defeat, the uphill climb over regret. Choose to move forward when most wouldn't. It's the decision you'll always be thankful you made. There's often a vast distinction 
between what we think is holding us back and what is actually holding us back. And that may even be putting it lightly. Most of the time, we're just plain misinformed. Most of the time, we're looking externally at irrelevant discrepancies between ourselves and someone else. We're looking at things that happened yesterday, possible outcomes that may happen tomorrow. We're creating entire stories, crafting narratives, building hostile worlds that simply don't exist. When what we need is simple, to give ourselves permission to let ourselves walk out that front door and towards what we long for. When this came to light recently, I, I shared a, a simple 20 second message on TikTok where uh, basically I highlighted John Green's quote about the best things in life occurring after we find the courage to depart or leave where we are, right? To build again. And as I was looking at the response, it was both beautiful and eye-opening. Hundreds and hundreds of comments from people saying that the message helped them feel empowered to do what they've been putting off. And some called it fate. Some called it what they needed to hear at the exact moment they needed to hear it. And as I'm going through, I, I, I keep thinking the same thing over and over and over. Every single one of these people they already knew in their hearts what needed to come next. They knew what would make them feel alive. They knew where the compass was pointing. Yet their default led them to the same place we've all been, waiting for external permission, waiting for life to give us a reason to say, okay, the light is now green. You can go. The time is right. Now, don't get me wrong. It means the world that a simple message can shift one's perspective that way. I've been on the receiving end. I was stuck looking for some type of guidance we all have, but I think we'd all agree that if that guidance helps us get back on track, then the real question should be, how do we live so that we can stay to the best of our ability on track? Find ourselves less prone to those occurrences, more confident in ourselves, in our dreams, in where we're going. And for me, it's been understanding that in my life, I am the one that creates, signs, and sends the permission slips. I say go. And when I remember that, I'm free to do what's best for me. I'm simultaneously the architect and the pieces, the wind and the sail. See, you don't need a reason to walk out of a relationship you're not happy in. You don't need a reason to leave a job that's not pushing you to be who you most want to become. You don't need a reason to change a habit or reinvent yourself or begin again. No, all you need is the courage to green light what your heart already knows it wants. We think that the external world has the answers for us. When in reality, we've had them the whole time. We just want something to point to to say, see, I was right. But we don't need to be reactive. We can be proactive. You can be the one that lights the fire. When you follow your intuition, your heart, your sense of purpose, life conforms because it has to conform. When you become an immovable object, life around you moves, it makes way. And if it doesn't, then you go back to the drawing board, you adapt and adjust. 
And that's the beauty of life. That's how we build meaning, trusting ourselves to walk into that resistance. Because the friction and the headwind is never what's holding us back. Are they uncomfortable? Yeah. At times. Does it scare us? Sure. It's supposed to. But it's not what holds you back. Waiting for someone or something to come along and green light your journey through life is what holds you back. And it's funny, I think we again and again overlook the simplest of truths. The hardest part is starting. It's convincing yourself that one, it's possible, and two, you're worth it. Everything else you face from the second you walk out that front door can be conquered. In fact, we ourselves grow along the way so that we can rise up and meet the demands of life, but it's unquestionably doable. That thought as you look out the window, right? What if the worst case scenario happens? It can't. Because the worst case scenario is sitting in that seat your whole life, looking out the window and imagining a world where you found the courage to be more, to explore, to live life as it was meant to be lived. But let's say, let's say that what we fear does come to fruition. Then I ask, what are the odds it's reversible? Probably high. Let's say I want to start a podcast and I finally work up the courage and I get my mic and I start my show and no one listens. But I keep going and I keep going and nothing sticks. And most importantly, I learn, look, I'm really not crazy about this idea. It wasn't what I thought it was. It's not me. Okay, perfect. Now you know. And sure, it took time to learn that lesson. But you have the rest of your life to continue the beautiful experiment to search for what lights you up. But you found the courage to explore, to try, to begin, and you are now better because of it. That's your worst case scenario? Sounds a lot less scary to me than a life lived sitting there looking out the window. See, we can't let the fear of an unlikely worst case stop the possibility of that oh so coveted best case. Don't let the virtually 0% probability of losing everything overshadow the opportunity to gain everything. Let's never allow ourselves to get caught standing still waiting for the universe to give us the answer as though we're waiting for a letter in the mail. No, give yourself permission to see the upside, to make your own decisions, and most importantly, to live your life. Stay awake long enough to capture the reality in front of you, but not so long that you forget to dream of new realities. Stay who you are because your voice and your vision and your talents, they're unparalleled. But don't stay the same because to evolve is to breathe life into that authenticity. Stay away from those misaligned ventures, the broken places, the empty relationships. They're not you. But stay close to those things that are. 
stay in when it's time to invest in yourself to chip away at our default ignorance, to turn that curious soul into a knowledgeable actor. But know that all that other stuff, the fun, the escapes, the distractions, they stay right where they are, waiting, should you need them. Stay the course, not just when it's easy, but when it's difficult, When things for a moment in time feel impossible, lose their glamour, feel like a burden too costly for you to pay. Because hanging in there through the storm, it changes the way we look at life. Like being able to see the stars for the very first time and no storm stays forever. Stay humble because knowing What you don't know is the first step in becoming who you might be. But don't stay so humble that you can't move with conviction into that great unknown. Stay hungry, stay motivated, stay fixated on the next great adventure. But stay grateful for everything you have now. See, without that, The future loses its allure and its relevance. Without that, the perpetual desire for more stays. But that all-important sense of purpose goes. And a life without meaning, well, it just isn't much of a life. And that, if anything, is what we are left to understand. That fine line between staying and going, anchors down or sails up, acceptance of all that is but the pursuit of all that can be when the heart pushes and the brain pulls perhaps this little formula is what connects all the dots stay who you are and go where that truth leads you stay because identity is power home is our foundation and our reflection tells the story but go because progress is happiness Meaning is rooted in overcoming, dying and being born again, slaying dragons just to prove to ourselves that we could. So go dream of new realities. Just make sure you stay awake long enough to remember why you dream.